So welcome everyone to week three of our worship course and we're going to start in the same way that we have the last two weeks and that's uh, musically and in worship. So I'm going to play a hymn again and because we're thinking about music this week I've chosen a hymn that uh, says come let us all unite and sing. So I'll play that um we'll then have uh, a moment of quiet and uh, probably a prayer and then we'll say the lord's prayer so let me share my screen and we'll go into the hymn So we'll be quiet for a little while after that and uh, just a chance for us to pray quietly ourselves for um, our world and for anything that we want to pray for and then like last week I'll use a prayer from the prayer handbook and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer. So let's be quiet first. Today's prayer in the prayer handbook. 
God of glory, present in all places and filling all things, treasury of blessings and source of life, come and dwell with us. Cleanse us from all sin and grant us your salvation. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So again, like last week, I'm going to put you in um, pairs. Now, those of you who are already a pair, would you like to talk to each other or would you like to be matched up with another window? Kathy and Beryl, would you like to talk to each other or? I can't hear you, of course. We're happy to be matched up to another window. Okay, that's fine. And Colin and Janet, to you as well. Yeah. We, I can't hear you. I, I'm afraid I still can't hear you, so this might be a problem. Okay, but if you're going to share with other people, you're going to need to make your sound work somehow. Um, so that might be a problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, whoever gets put with Colin and Janet, <laughs> if you can't hear them, you just talk, all right, because they'll hear you. <laughs> um, so last week I asked you to... Um, to think of five hymns or songs that you might use for a service. So I hope you've done that. And that's what I hope you'll share in your pairs. So I'll give you about 10 minutes, that's five minutes each, um, to share the hymns and songs you've chosen and to say why you've chosen them. And so long as the other person can be heard, they'll then ask you, um, maybe ask you a question or two. And if you want to come back to the main room, you can do before the time's up if you want. I think there's an option to come back to the main room. So I'll set up the breakout rooms. I'm doing it for 10 minutes. I've come into your room to see if you can all be heard. And uh, Martin, can you unmute? Hello, Colin. Hello, Help. Colin. Hello, Janet. Can you hear me? Colin and Janet, there's something that's not functioning on your computer because you're not muted, but we just can't hear you. So it, it'll be something in your settings, either the Zoom settings or the settings of your computer. So I think I'd better talk to Martin and, and you can listen in. <laughs> okay, Martin, did you manage to... 
do the yes. exercise? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. do, do tell me. Uh, thank you for the reminder this morning. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> right. The first one was number 100, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Okay. The second one was number 20, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Right. The third one was 102, For the Beauty of the Earth. 51, Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God my Father. And the number five, 707, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Okay, so what made you choose those ones then? Uh, I choose the hymns which I, being a non-singer, find easier to sing. I, I class those as traditional hymns, um, which I've known probably many, many, many years. Um, and I must say, they're my preference um, uh, from, from the, the All Things Bright and Beautiful, of course, as a primary school hymn, yeah. which has was been, been with me all my life. And, and I do find great satisfaction in the outside countryside where we share that, that um, those kinds of hymns resonate with me. Right. So is there a reason why you put that first? Um, not particularly. Um, I knew that was going to be in my list right. as, soon as, as soon as I realised. So I, I put it down, um, but not because that was number one of five. That just happened to be in my head. And I thought, well, that's going down for a start. <laughs> right. Um, and what about be still? I, I must say I'm, I'm influenced a great deal with some of these with Linda, my wife. Um, she'll come home from church and she'll say, oh, we had so-and-so hymn today. And I said, well, I've never heard of it. Well, of course you have, of course you have. And then she'll sing it to me. And of course I have. And, and, and I, I, I think... Uh, after 61 years, um, we know each other. <laughs> and, 61 years? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we went to the same primary school. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you have known each other a long time. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, so we both find that we, we are liking the, the same kind of music and words and we both i think i'm right in saying prefer um traditional i would use the word traditional rather than um upbeat when you see drums and uh, uh guitars appearing whatever the hymn that that certainly turns me off <laughs> right well be still for the presence of the lord isn't traditional it's a nice modern reflective hymn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just traditional that you're you're favouring, but you mm. are favouring um, the the music being more traditional. I think that's what you're saying. That, yeah, um, yeah. A hymn rather than a a, a, a song. song. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there's four minutes left. Um, are the others just ones you like, or what are? Why have you chosen them? Well, well there's lots of lots of hymns um, which I do like, but those ones um, sprung to mind. I, I do find difficulty. I, I'm, I'm I am um, a less than decent singer. I must admit, I always have been. And I, f I find that these, uh, what I choose and the others which I choose, I find they're simpler to, to sing. Mm. Some, somehow the words uh, uh, 
seem to flow better. Some, some I find great difficulty in um, uh, getting my head round, and, 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 and they're hard work. Right. With, with my um, range of notes. <laughs> So the tune is really quite important to you. Uh, the, oh yes, def definitely, yes, that definitely is, uh, and also the the piano or the, the nice electric organ uh, um, to accompany it, or or um, church organ to ch accompany it. Yes, yes. And even though you don't, you you think you haven't got a very good singing voice, you do. You do sing though, do you? You don't sit I, I, sound I, I, mouth shut. I sing in my way. Yes, right. I do. I do. I do um, participate um, more so now. We're looking at a screen as opposed when we come to church or to chapel, rather. When we come to the chapel, I find myself um, looking up at the screen because I have to, with no no um, book in my hand. Whereas before, when we had the screen and we had the books, I would prefer to look down into the book and and I felt that I was disguising my voice then <laughs> right. but, now, but now I've got to look up um, at the screen and and that allows me to express myself perhaps a little too um, <laughs> uh, what shall I say enthusiastically for what for the for the grade I can sing at <laughs> Do you think it matters the quality of the singing then? I beg your pardon. If you if you were talking to somebody else and they said um, they they couldn't sing very well, so they didn't sing loudly, would you think that was okay? I mean, does uh, the quality matter? Um, well, yes. Um, a long, long while ago, my father told me, "You're singing in your boots." um he could sing a little bit and my mother says my mother could certainly sing but i um just just never and that lived with me for a long long while wow. and recently as christmas time when i went across to the hive and um we was going through some hymns and uh, uh, carols ready for the evening performance um in the end i sat in the audience not performed so you know what my voice was coming over to sarah <laughs> oh who was in charge ah. uh, and, and and i i had to admit she, she's dead right what she said in my opinion mm -hmm. she, she obviously could pick my voice out as being down there where it shouldn't be <laughs> right but then them sort of comments they live with me i know well i was always told i couldn't sing and um and i used to say i couldn't sing for a long time but then in my 30s and 40s somebody told me i could sing oh. and um and i started to tune in to other people i find it difficult to hold a tune if it's just me although i do it better than i used to but if i'm with other people i can hold the note by following the other people <laughs> but i've got more confidence and as i've got more confidence um i i think i do sing but the but those childhood messages can be really they stay with you don't they yes yeah they, they, they do yes yes um i've never had anybody say oh you've got a pleasant voice martin you you can sing i i'd like to have a voice like nothing like that has ever been said about me so that that um that's that says it all really but i still i still persevere and i still sing in my way on a sunday morning yeah and it sounds to me so you value the singing and the music as part of the worship Oh, definitely, definitely. Yes, they go together. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, our time is nearly up. It's counting us down. So we'll go back to the main room. Okay. I'm glad I joined you, else you might have had a rather silent time. <laughs> but Colin, <laughs> Janet, it's, it's good okay. that you've been listening in. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. I joined the group um, that Colin and Janet were in, so so it was all right. Um, 
okay. I'm not going to ask you for feedback at the moment, but I want you to do a little exercise now. So have you got a pen and paper with you? So I'm going to give you three um, spectrums. So I want you to draw three lines and at one end of the spectrum, one end of the line on the first line, put old. And at the other end of the line, put new. So there's one line with old and new. Then the next line has known at one end and unknown at the other. So the old and new is referring to the um, time music was written. Old is obviously old and new is more modern, whatever that means to you. And then known and unknown, and then the third line has him at one end and worship song at the other. And now I just want you to mark on each line where you think the balance should be in a service. So in other words, if you think oral the hymns should be old ones, put them up on the old end. If you think they should all be new, put it the other end. And if you think there should be an equal balance, put it in the middle or wherever you want to put it. So do that with all three lines where you think the balance should be, or the weight, I should perhaps say. So the first line, I said old and new, but perhaps it could have said traditional and modern. Anyone like to say where they put their marker? You'll have to unmute, obviously, if anyone's. Marion, you're going to say? Uh, um, I put mine in the midway. Right. Because I thought you needed to have a mix of both, otherwise we're never going to learn anything new, even though I like old. Okay. So you, your own preference would be to go towards the old? My preference would be, yes. But I, do, I am learning some new ones, which really are absolutely lovely. So I think it should be a mix at the moment, a, a fairly even mix. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Heather and then Martin. <clears throat> I've put, for the old, I, uh, it looks around about 30% old and and the other one's new. And, and why? Actually, I should have put it. Yeah, actually, for me, it would have been more like 70% old and 30% new, actually. I think I've got me lying in the wrong place. Oh. <laughs> I think we should have some new, but have the old ones and some new so that we do learn new. Yes, um, I, I may not have made the distinction clear enough because the next line was known and unknown, but that can apply to both old and new. Yes. And the old yes. and new line, I was really thinking of modern versus traditional. Right. But, so that might make a difference to where you put the line because I'm sure Heather, you do like modern songs as well, mm -hmm. or modern hymns. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. So I wasn't very clear, I don't think. Martin, were you going to speak? Wait a minute. No. Yeah, you're there. 
Yeah, I, I would definitely on the first line go towards old traditional. Yes, and you were telling me, weren't you? Yes. Why that was? <laughs> yes. so, yeah. Tell other people then. <laughs> A lot, um, well, m most of my choice was to do with hymns I've known since childhood. I find the new material and accompaniment doesn't suit my kind of uh, satisfaction. Okay. Okay. Right, I'm gonna, thank you, Martin. I'm gonna go on to the next line. So, known and unknown. So in a service, where should the balance be between hymns that people know and maybe ones they don't know? And that could be a traditional hymn or it could be something else. It, it might be known or it might not be known. Where should the balance be? Somebody different like to say where they put their marker? Lynn? Um, I put it um, almost always, almost over to the known um, right. because it, it throws me um, when I get an unknown one that I can't sing. Um, that um, would be altered if we had a choir or somebody to lead us and to, to um, teach us how it goes. But to go straight into a, a tune that I've never heard of before, I'd, I can't concentrate on the words of the hymn, which I know have been chosen because of the words probably, but I can't concentrate on it because I can't sing it. Okay. So um, this isn't, I'm going to say something and I'm not meaning to sound facetious or anything, <laughs> but how do you think we therefore would learn new material? Um, by practicing it. We have had that before and we used to have a singing group at, at Watton pre-COVID <laughs> and they would learn new ones and teach them to us. So I'm not saying we shouldn't have the new ones, but um, I don't like it being sprung on me. Right. And actually, that is an interesting point in terms of enabling people to worship, which is what we're thinking about in this course, really. Um, because in order to worship, one thing I think is you've got to feel relatively safe and you've and comfortable. And if you feel uncomfortable, because there's a new him or for any other reason it's not going to help you worship is it no no but there is this problem about how we therefore learn new material um marion did you want to say something you can stay unmute if you want <laughs> mute. oh there we go sorry yes i i i understand totally where lynn's coming from it's horrible suddenly oh gosh i don't know this tune we we don't have a new one every week but I think you should have a new one at least every so often so that you can learn them but you need to be warned so if we've got a new one um usually I'd say it's Elizabeth and she'll say to us right we're going to have this will be a different tune and we don't have an organist so we use the um cds and varying things and so we sit and have a listen to it first and and sort of think it through for a little bit you know not half an hour but play it through and then we have a listen and sometimes we'll listen to it a couple of times and then we'll sort of give it a go um and then we'll perhaps have it again in the not too far away so that we can sort of get the drift of that one but you know we do need to try and learn some and I, I'm I'm a traditionalist so but you know there are some nice ones but you just need to be warned don't you really say this is how we're going to do it right that's it yeah <laughs> yeah well, no, that's I think going... that's what I was saying and that's very helpful, Marion, um, because if you've sort of heard it or practiced it, even as part of the worship, you're then able to sing it with a more of a degree of being comfortable with it. And, and so then you're able to use it to worship, even though you haven't known it before. And what's good at Sam Hills, where, where you've just mentioned, 
is that because you have somebody locally who's often leading the worship, because you're lucky and you have a local preacher that's part of your congregation, it means she can introduce a new one and then the next time she's there, she can have it again. So that's really quite an ideal situation. Okay, let's go to the last line, the hymn and the worship song. Um, let's have somebody different again. Sandra, I'm going to pick on you because <laughs> you're just very quiet otherwise. Um, can, I, can I just say something about the last one as well? Yeah. Quickly. I think there is something to say about um, singing a new hymn to a well-known tune because yeah. I think it makes you appreciate the words more you you tend to for me it gives meaning to the words because you tend I sometimes feel like I'm singing a well-known well-known words to a well-known hymn sometimes it can be just a something to do I, I don't know how to explain it but mm. you're so familiar with it that you don't perhaps appreciate the words so much yeah yeah so I was just going to say that yeah and also it takes away if the tune is familiar it takes away some of the discomfort yeah. <laughs> of a tune you don't know and no, it enables yeah. you to sing it even though you're not used to the words yeah yeah Sandra yeah. what have you put for the last one well I've gone more towards the hymn for lots of the reasons that we've already said about what like you said about feeling comfortable and worship worship the modern worship songs perhaps um are more geared towards um congregations that have a lot more younger people in than we would have at Swaffham certainly um but again I think it's good to have have them included okay um I'm just going to ask everybody else did anybody put that particular one nearer the worship song side no everyone put it towards the hymn Put it pretty much in the middle. <laughs> I would yeah. probably yeah. Yeah. to be brave and say I did. And then I thought maybe I should have put it towards the hymn. I think it's um, <clears throat> um, just just my experience, really. I'm thinking some of the older hymns, although they're comfortable because you've known, known them since childhood, I get a bit uncomfortable with some of the words and sentiments in some of the older hymns lyrics now um and equally, sometimes they're not understandable are they yeah and then and sometimes you don't know what they're saying yeah yeah i know sorry um, i interrupted you which i shouldn't have done yeah but um equally with the worship songs there are some which are very perhaps shall we say banal and repetitive and don't really seem to say anything but i think in recent times and with some writers they've done some very thoughtful um, hymns, and, and like Sandra says, it makes you think because you, you're not so familiar with the words and perhaps the tune. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I'm just going to um, share my screen with you again, and hopefully you'll see it this time, which you didn't in the first week. If the screen doesn't come up, can somebody shout at me? Um, and Sandra, I'm appointing you to shout at me if the screen doesn't come up. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to shout, just say, Jackie, that it's not there. <laughs> um, because on this point about the, the differences between a hymn and a worship song, uh, I was looking up on the internet what it might say about that. Right, let's see. I can see that. Yeah, brilliant. Good. Yeah. So, um, so first of all, I uh, sort of looked up what is a hymn. And this is what Wikipedia says, that fount of all knowledge. A hymn is a type of song, usually religious and partially coincident with devotional song, specifically written for the purpose of adoration or prayer and typically addressed to a deity or deities or to a prominent figure or personification. The word hymn derives from a Greek word, hymnos, which means a song of praise. 
a writer of hymns is known as a hymnist. The singing or composition of hymns is called hymnody. Collections of hymns are known as hymnals or hymn books. And hymns may or may not include instrumental accompaniment. The most interesting bit of that <laughs> is that it comes from a Greek word, which actually does mean a song of praise. And of course, um, if we think in classical literature or something of somebody singing a hymn to somebody or in praise of somebody, um, we understand that it means praise. But of course, hymns have developed in a much wider way. Now, what's the difference between a hymn and a worship song? Uh, I found somebody's website that had two helpful pieces. This is the first of them. Hymns are self-contained pieces that begin and end with the poetry. Most hymns are designed for four-part harmony, making them ideal for large group participation. In general, the instrumental accompaniment maintains the harmonic structure found in the vocal lines. However, contemporary worship songs generally reflect the vernacular style of the moment. Given that popular music is instrumentally driven, the lyrics of most worship songs cannot be separated from their music. Most are written for solo or small group performance. Vocal harmonies, if there are any, aren't notated in the score. Instead, they are dictated by the instrumental arrangements and are often improvised by the performers. So that's making the distinction that hymns can be read as poetry. They don't have to go with the music. They're self-contained pieces. And the music ideally keeps um, the poetic rhythms. On the other hand, it's saying that worship songs uh, are much more vernacular and they can't be separated from their music because the two go together. But then the same website uh, gave another difference. Each verse of a hymn typically contains different texts, though all of the text works together to communicate a specific truth of Christianity. Hymns often use warm personal language for God. The overall view they present of humankind's relationship with God tends to be micro cosmic, i.e. intimacy with God is possible on earth, but it will be infinitely greater in heaven. However, the text in contemporary songs tends to be repetitive. This is in part because various sections of the songs are repeated, and in part because most songs have a thematic tagline or phrase that is repeated frequently. Contemporary songs typically use warm personal language for God and emphasize personal experience. The overall view they present of humankind's relationship with God tends to be deeply intimate and personal, mimicking romantic love at times. So here the difference is that hymns have verses uh, which contain different ideas different phrases, different texts. And although they, um, although they talk about intimacy with God, it's a bit more at a distance. Whereas worship songs uh, tend to have one idea, one phrase that gets repeated, uh, that there is a lot of repetition and it's because they're much more of a love song they are allowing the people singing them um, to enter into an intimate and personal relationship with God. So that website and me is not saying one is better than the other, it's just that they're very different vehicles for worship. Time for a Bible reading, I think. Um, I've asked Sheila in advance to read to us Psalm 98, if you want to find it. Just give them a moment, Sheila, to find it. And uh, then once we've heard it, I'm going to put you in groups again for a little while. 
just to look closer at what this says about music. Okay, thanks, Sheila. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn, shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to put you in two groups now. Um, there'll be four windows in each group. Look at that psalm. Pick out the various music um, that's in there, things to do with singing and music. Just pick out the different words and phrases, but don't take too long over it. And then if you've left enough time, and I'm giving you eight minutes, um, think about does this psalm help to explain why music is so important as a carrier of worship? Does this psalm help to explain why music is so important as a carrier of worship? So that was two tasks. See what it says about music, the different sorts of music. And does it help to explain why music is so important? So uh, I'll just set you up in the groups. Did either group get on to why if that psalm says anything about music being important. Yes, somebody like to talk to me and tell me what you said. Mary, and you look so you're going to. Sorry. Um, Heather's going to. I was saying that I thought it left us in absolutely no doubt as to how important music um, was in praise. Yeah. Okay. That was good. Sandra, you were going to say something? Well, I think we thought the same, the same thing, yes. And if we're going to praise then we need to do it joyfully and loudly and let God know that we're pleased with what he's done for us yeah brilliant yes make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth wait forth into joyous song and sing praises so it undoubtedly identifies singing with joy there doesn't it mm. although of course we also find it very helpful to sing reflective things don't we and maybe it's to do with emotion that we can express different moods and emotions through music in a way that we can't when we're speaking heather have you got something on in the background i'm going to mute you again <laughs> um we're nearly at the end of tonight um just just what just one question to finish with um given that people do like different things i mean on this zoom you've been fairly consistent about what you've been saying but if we had a different selection of people some people might have been arguing very strongly for the worship song side um and in our congregations especially the larger congregations, there will always be people who like different sorts of music. 
So just the final question, how, for people who organize worship, which I know some of us are and some of us are not, but how do people who organize worship please everybody? <laughs> I think Marion's saying that you can't please everybody, but I wonder what we have to do in terms of the balance of the different things to enable everybody to be able to worship in some way. That's just something to think about. Um, I have got some homework for next week, but I'm gonna email it to you. I'm just gonna take a copy of the green, there we are, uh, so that I remember who's here because it's um, what I want you to do for next week is, it's not really complicated, but it's easier if I write it. So I will email you that. And if you want something to think about this evening, I've already given you something to think about. How do we help a whole range of people to worship together? And many of our churches now have no young people, do we? But for churches that do have young people, that's even more of a problem. How do you, how does one do all age worship that helps everybody to worship? Actually, Sandra, you had an all age service and um, is anyone else here from Swatham? Yes. And um, people from Swatham, you had an all age service yesterday because of the brownies and the guides. I gather there were only seven of them, yeah. but nonetheless, that must have made a difference to the worship. It did. And I have to say that Jen did an absolutely brilliant service. She put so much into it. It was a shame there were only seven yeah. there, but um, the adults loved it too. Mm. And it, it was brilliant what she did. So, And I imagine, because a real skill in all age worship is not talking down to the adults mm. <laughs> or talking over the heads of the children. Yeah. And I'm sure she probably, she pitched it just right. No, she did, yeah, it was brilliant, yeah. 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 I had a service yesterday morning with one child in it, an 11 year old who's always there at Great Ellingham. So I knew she'd be there. Um, so I also was trying to do worship that was appropriate for different ages, even though there was only the one young person. But it's quite hard, quite hard. Okay, so we'll end with a short time of silence and then I'll say a prayer. Loving God, thank you for this time we've had this evening to think about music and hymns and songs and what we like and what we don't like and what helps us to worship and what is less helpful. But we just thank you for the gift of music. Thank you that we can express joy, that we can express praise, that we can express other emotions through the medium of music and through the medium of singing. Thank you so much that this is part of your creation. And uh, please help us as we continue to worship in churches, whether we're leading the worship or whether we're in the congregation, please help us to be able to use the hymns, use the songs as vehicles of giving you the worth that is due to you, the worship that's due to you. We offer ourselves again one, again this evening, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, hope to see you next week, folks. Oh, and what we're thinking about next week is um, the organization of a service. So not just the music, all of it. <laughs> but once again, it's appropriate to all of us whether or not we lead worship. Okay, thanks for being here. Bye. Bye.